All right, now, um, in assembling the heads and getting together, of course, I, I either use um, a pressure washer, uh, simple green, and clean it all up, or uh, if I've got it, which I'm fixing to refill up on it, is solvent 140. Now, once you get it all clean, I wanted to show you a little mixture that I use. You see that red goop? That's a combination of three things. White lithium, STP, and uh, Federal Mogul Red Engine Assembly Lube. That's probably what gives it the pinkish tint to it. And I mix them up really good. Now, the reason I do that is because I don't know sometimes when I send these heads to my customers if they're going to be run on the week I get them or whether they're going to sit for a while. And this mixture washes away really quick. It ain't a goop that hangs up in there. In other words, once it gets to run in and oil gets to lubricating, uh, it will wash away fairly fast, which is a good thing. The other reason I do it is because I set my valve guide clearances tight. A lot tighter than what most people do and the reason why is if you set them up tight and you lubricate them if you get everything the way it's supposed to be you're going to have a way major extended valve guide life which means you're going to have valve seal life for a long time the reason a lot of shops won't set them up tight like that is because they don't want the chance of a stuck valve they just want to holler them out run a uh, like a diamond uh, cutter home through it it just has a certain size run it through there and that way they know better loose than worry about having it come up tight because they won't take the extra time to get them exactly where they got to be with a hone all which these things were all hand honed the next thing i do is on the head i'll bend it over like that and then i'll take uh, um 20 w50 oil or 1040 in the summer typically uh 2050 and in the, of course in the winter the 1040 i'll shoot oil in the guide i don't mind telling you this is the most awesome set of pro max standard flange i ever done a 200 and 46 cc's I got damn near 80 hours worth of labor on them setting them up with the tubes and all the stuff So far to date these are the baddest set that I've done. All right I hate to see them go sometimes all right when you're putting your valves in you do it like a screw You ease it in back and forth and just level it that way you're letting that mixture get in there good now what it will do is on startup it will make a little bit of smoke for a few seconds, but hey, so what? So it puffs a little bit when it first starts up. That's to all the lubricants. That's okay because, you know, you're establishing your wear pattern. It's lubricated. You ain't got to worry about anything going wrong. So what's a little bit of smoke for a few seconds? All right. As you can see, it's, I'll just follow it through and all my valves are always numbered if it's a head bites head what i do is when i number stamp the valves which i always face my valves i number stamp them and then face them they're also stamped on the bottom where the port runner is in an area that if it's surfaced it don't matter the number will still be there see like eight six four and two and then all the valves numbered accordingly all right uh, the other thing is, uh, look at the distance now on the 2100. By the way, valve stem height, all of these are under, five thousandths or under, all being the same height. You can take your finger and run across the valve and they're dead nuts on the money. All the stem height is within 5.005 thousandths on stem height. So, that's going to make the valve spring pressure really, really perfect. Uh, for the choice of valve springs, I went with a uh, comp cams double spring setup, and um, it's a knotty camshaft that's going in here, 513, 530 hydraulic roller. Um, I did the valve spring pressure a little bit different. I'll get more into that in a minute, but just while I had it, I wanted you to look at a close-up of that beautiful mix of 2100 
and 160. <laughs> There ain't no much more room you can put in there for valve. I wish I would have done that and a couple other things in the beginning, but that's all right. It's what it's supposed to be now, and there you go. I'll show you the valve spring pressure in a minute, something I did a little different on my hydraulic rollers a lot of places don't do. Okay, on the double springs, like typically it might show 140 pounds on the seat and 350 over the nose is what Lenati was kind of wanting. I dropped the seat pressure back down to around 125 to 130 on the seat, but I put the over the nose pressure at 380, 385 pounds. Most of the newer hydraulic roller valve springs are going a lot higher on the over the nose pressure and lower on the seat pressure. So I tried to give this guy a little bit extra on that area because it's not the max lift is on the exhaust at 530 and then 513 on the intake which he had already bought the cam uh, I've got ratios of intake exhaust around 75 78 percent so if you're not running no nitrous to run a split level cam on this it's going to hurt you you'd want a straight across cam on lift and duration to really take advantage of it because I got the flow rates between the intake port and the exhaust right about where they need to be there's no deficiencies here so anyway just wanted to wrap that up with it now we're going to go ahead and go to the manifold i'm getting ready to bag it up and try to make ups here so anyway y'all are seeing it this is probably like i said it is no doubt the best china head that i've ever done as far as flow rates hitting almost 320 but um Wow.